In this video, we're gonna be analyzing a skier going down the hill and solve for the skier's final velocity without friction and with friction as well. So our skier is gonna be 50 kilograms and the skier starts from rust and we're gonna look for the final velocity at the bottom of the hill if the hill is 75 meters in length. And then for the second part of the problem, when we solve for the final velocity with friction, we have the coefficient of kinetic friction at 0.12. Now, when solving a problem like this, we're gonna to have to use some kinematic formulas, and this is gonna be accelerated motion because the person is affected by the force of gravity causing them to accelerate. So we have a couple different variables, so let's go ahead and label those first. We know that the initial velocity is zero meters per second, and we know that the displacement that they move is 75 meters. Now, for any accelerated motion kinematic formulas, you always need three variables in order to solve for anything. So we're missing a third one. Now, we have a mass, and the mass can indirectly help us with finding the acceleration. So if we use um, a combination of some different ideas, we can go ahead and solve for the acceleration. So what we can do is um, use the angle, oh, excuse me, the angle for the decline is 40 degrees. So what we can do is draw a diagram and include this angle to solve for some different values to help us find that acceleration. So first of all, we have the force of gravity straight down. And then we have the normal force perpendicular to the ramp. And then in the case that we have the force of friction, the force of kinetic friction would be going against the slide. So for the first part of our problem, we're going to ignore friction and then just pay attention to Fn and Fg. Now what we're going to do is break that up into, um, break the Fg up into two different components. We have a perpendicular and a parallel component. Now that 40 degree angle is going to translate up in this little corner over here. So the first thing we're going to find is the horizontal component, this red component over here, which is going to be opposite of that angle. So we're going to end up using sine. So sine of 40 degrees equals opposite, which is this part over here. So we'll call that FGX as our X component over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is FG. So we know that FG is MG mass times 9.8. So then we have the X component coming out to be 314.97 Newtons. And then we can go ahead and label the FG as 490 Newtons. And then we're going to do the same thing for the vertical component as well, which we'll call the Y component. Because this is adjacent to that 40 degree angle, we're going to end up using cosine of 40 degrees equals FGY over 490. We're going to do the same thing we did with the other one, which is basically cross multiplying that 490 over the previous problem. We did the same thing. And then we're going to get a vertical component or perpendicular component of 375.36 Newtons. Now, the only part that we are concerned about for the first part of the problem is the X component, because the X component is the force that is causing it to slide down the ramp. Now, if we take that X component of 314.97 and then set that equal to MA using Newton's second law, we know the mass is 50 kilograms. So we can go ahead and solve for A by dividing both sides by 50. And that would give us an acceleration of about 6.30 meters per second squared. Okay, so we can go ahead and add that to our list. And now we have our third variable that we're looking for. Now with those three different things, we are solving for the final velocity. So we're gonna wanna use the formula VF squared equals VI squared plus two A delta X because of all the kinematic 
formulas for accelerated motion. That's the only one that we have three out of the four. And then the fourth unknown one is the VF that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers in and solve for our VF. So what I did was I plugged in the zero, um, zero squared is zero. So that's not gonna be significant to changing the value of our answer. So we took the two A times the delta X, found the product of those three, square rooted both sides. And once I took the square root of that value, I got 30.74 meters per second. Now for the second part of our problem, we are going to include friction. So let's erase a little of this and then work on the second part of our problem. So now for the second part of our problem, we are going to include friction. So let's go ahead and label that this is without friction or neglecting friction. And for our second one, we are going to consider friction and we have a mu value of 0 0.12, the coefficient of kinetic friction. Now we're going to have to use a formula, which is um, the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. And we basically already have the normal force because in the y direction, there is no movement or acceleration. Everything is in equilibrium in the perpendicular direction. So we have the normal force over here, and then we have the y component from gravity over here, which are equal numbers in opposite directions. And we already have that value right here, which is 375.36 Newtons. So that is going to be our normal force. So we can plug in that 375.36 and that 0 0.12. And then we're going to have our force of friction, which comes out to 45.04 Newtons. So now the only difference in our problem solving method is we're going to have a different acceleration. As you imagine with the force of friction opposing the slide, our acceleration is going to be less. So we are still going to take that 314.97 that is directed down the hill and subtract that force of friction that's going against that slide. And then we would have 314.97 Newtons minus 45.04, and that would equal m times a. Same thing, we're going to divide both sides by 50, and then we'll get an acceleration of 5.40 meters per second squared. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the problem um, over again, except with our new acceleration. Our initial velocity is still zero. Our delta x is still 75. We're just going to plug it in with the new a and see what we get. Now for our second final velocity, as you would imagine, we got a value that is less than our original one because this one is including friction. So if it has a force that is opposing the slide of the skier, then we should have a final velocity. It's a little bit less because it has less acceleration. So to sum things up, if you're working out one of these skier problems, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find the FG, um, break it up into its different components and then kind of work from there to solve for the acceleration. Once you have the acceleration, you're going to slide from Newton's second law of F equals MA to your kinematic formulas. And depending on the problem you're solving for, the one we were solving for is solving for VF. Um, but you could also solve for time or delta X, depending on the style of the problem and what you're given. Um, but you just take one of your kinematic formulas, plug it in, do a little bit of algebra, and that will lead you to your final solution. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.